make sure I get my screen in the right spot here. So I'll just talk a little bit, give you a little bit of background for those of you who weren't around for the other presentations on what the city has been up to with regard to affordable housing. Um, you know, first of all, the why, and I think everyone here probably is aware of why we're interested in this topic. There are major health inequities in affordable housing uh, related to pests. And uh, this is not, this is my gross out photo. These are not coffee grounds. That is cockroach grass and an affordable housing unit that was vacant for two weeks. And the cockroach is living behind the, the, uh, the vent hood uh, gave that to us. It shows you just the extent of some of the infestations that we saw in the early days in 2014-15 when we started working on this particular project. We, there were major rodent infestations. Uh, bed bugs, this is underneath a baseboard, um, a rubber baseboard accumulation of bed bugs. Really gross. I hope you've had your breakfast. Um, conditions were really bad and we saw some very poor test management techniques being used to address it. And this isn't necessarily a result, just a result of bad uh, uh, information or bad practice. It was really, a, a lot of it was a result of, of the sort of impossible budget situation that the old public housing authority faced. Uh, they could not do long-term uh, pest management contracts. Practically speaking, they could not do them long-term. They had to do month to month. And that meant they got really poor service. Uh, we had, um, there were some managers who were actually distributing bug bombs to residents uh, to control things like bed bugs. And by the way, bug, bug bombs absolutely do not work on bed bugs. They've that's been proven, uh, but they are quite dangerous, uh, especially if you leave them in an enclosed area with a pilot light in your stove. So. There were a lot of bad practices, a lot of horribly bad situations and living situations. Just it was really time for a change. And, you know, a lot of it related to um, bad design and bad maintenance and, in, you know, and their inability to do appropriate maintenance in those buildings. Um, this was a, a pipe going from unit uh, upstairs to downstairs units, all both of which were infested with bed bugs. Guess why they both got infested? Because they just walked up that little super highway. So we had been interested in the IPM TAC has been interested for many years in how to better prevent pests. Uh, you can uh, hint if you're taking the exam, pay attention to this. Um, there's some basic things that you look for. Uh, you want to minimize food sources, minimize water sources, minimize places for them to live, you know, and, and stay un, un, um, molested. Uh, of course, sealing off any entry points to these, um, these buildings. And then also providing a way to inspect areas. Sometimes you need to inspect to know if you have a problem, especially with foundations, and sometimes you can't reach them. So these are kind of the basic premises of pest prevention. We had looked all over the place for a, a, a you know, compendium of these things and did not find any. And I think architects in particular were not, have not been tuned into this issue when they're designing buildings. Um, we, uh, Shrada and, and I um, worked on a project with a national group, a national uh, cross-disciplinary advisor group uh, funded by Centers for Disease Control, and we put out this uh, set of guidelines. These are peer-reviewed um, guidelines on how to build pests out of buildings, and it's still available on our website. I'll post the link later. Um, and, you know, right about, uh, this is a page, don't try to read it, but there's all sorts of details and things that can be done um, uh, at the construction and renovation stage to build out pests in that set of guidelines so um, and some of those things like reducing food sources there's an example for dumpsters uh, removing harborage well one big way <laughs> that we found to reduce harborage lived under the kitchen cabinet you know there's that little gap under the cabinet those are perfect homes for rodents and cockroaches you can't get at them you can't clean it uh, 
you either need to seal it off or have it open so that you can clean it. Um, uh, simple things like sealing around uh, around sinks, fully sealing, uh, so that there are no spaces for cockroaches to hang out are very important. Um, that's the wrong way to, this should not be doing, it should not be a gap like that. And, um, and then sealing up other points of entry, like under the sink, putting uh, escutcheons with sealant under there to keep things out of your dwelling. But these are very important. Also, so these are some of the things that we addressed in the pest prevention guidelines. Around that time, there was also a new California law that is now in effect that requires landlords to address conditions that promote pests like leaky plumbing, cracks and holes and so forth. And, and this is now the law and uh, landlords are or should be held accountable for this. So there's more reason for them to do these sorts of things. So right about this time also, Mayor Ed Lee, late Mayor Ed Lee, um, embarked on a refresh of the San Francisco Public Housing Authority. It, there were a lot of problems. I've mentioned a few of them. And he he uh, commissioned this this report, re-envisioning re -envisioning SF Housing Authority, which led to the complete restructuring of, of the Housing Authority. And now uh, part of the big, the biggest part of the problem, or one of the biggest pro problems was they had no access to money to fix things when uh, a public housing authority does not have equity that they can borrow against and they are completely dependent on budgets, especially the federal budgets, which have steadily gone down over the decades. This is an easy one for the federal, for Congress to cut. And that is part of what led in the long term to many of these problems. So um, the result of this re-envisioning was what they call the Rental Assistance Demonstration Project, RAD projects. It's under HUD, Housing and Urban Development, the federal level. And really it was a way, a mechanism to um, convert these units into uh, uh, privately managed affordable housing units, what they call Section 8, and also free up a whole bunch of money to renovate them. And the city partnered with um, uh, uh, several, I think Bank of America and Wells Fargo, if I'm not mistaken, and some other, and the feds, and uh, put this together uh, with the San Francisco um, uh, Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development led the charge on this. And it was right about that time they did this, and we uh, saw an opportunity to build pest prevention into these units while they were doing the renovations. And the housing, the uh, mayor's office of housing was super cooperative. They were our very close partners on this, along with uh, the citywide pest contractor, Pest Tech. Um, we uh, we went in to a series of meetings with developers and architects uh, and city staff. Um, that were structured around initial inspections of the sites. Uh, this is just a punch list of things that Pest Tech found in one site. And these were these sort of fueled the conversations about the process that was to come. Um, and Mayor's Office of Housing actually put requirements into the design documents for these RAD projects that required sealing up gaps, for example. Um, we also organized uh, several trainings for IPM property managers, for property managers on IPM, including how to contract for it, um, how to manage it, what to look for, and so forth. Um, I'm hoping, I think there will be some more of these coming up in the future. Um, and then we uh, contracted uh, Pestec to do unit by unit inspections. These are a couple of the bed, fearless bed bug dogs that were out there uh, helping us look for bed bugs. Um, um, this was a lot of work. Um, 
this is almost 3,000 units of affordable housing that needed to be inspected one by one to get an idea of how bad things were and also what the problems, the structural problems were. So uh, we had the recommendations, the design requirements. We knew how many pests were there, um, roughly. And then I think one really important thing that probably helped things a lot was to uh, make arrangements to come in there halfway through construction and do what we call model unit inspections. Um, and the premise here is, you know, when you have a big project like this, there are a lot of subcontractors and sub subcontractors, and the message doesn't necessarily get to them. <laughs> they are used to doing things a certain way. Uh, for example, in the kitchen, they're used to putting sealant along the top edge of the countertop, but not along the sides of the cabinet. Simple things like that. So we arranged to come into each of these developments, look at a model unit with the subcontractors present, and it was a combination of an inspection and sort of a mini training. Uh, so they, they heard directly from us what the expectations were uh, on the pest prevention actions. I think that was super helpful. I'm not sure if Luis is in the audience, but you're free to chime in. <laughs> um, uh, we also had some tenant education that was part of this. Um, and, uh, you know, it was uh, the Mayor's Office of Housing rightfully <laughs> received good government award for all this whole program in 2016. We were part of that team. Um, and it, it's a big deal. And I'm, I think, if nothing else, it certainly improved the quality of life for thousands of, of uh, lower income people in the city. So one thing we didn't, we weren't able to do was go back and look at how, what, how good of a job they did on the pest prevention and what the impacts were. So we applied uh, for a grant from Department of Pesticide Regulation to evaluate this program in terms of the pest management aspects and the pest prevention aspects. Um, you know, originally there was 20, there were 29 total RAD sites that we worked with. Um, uh, we had to do a subset of those for this evaluation. Um, and we ended up with nine sites. So I'll tell you about what we did and then I'll tell you what we found. So first of all, there were nine sites. These are the sites that were involved. Um, all of them in the RAD program, and these are the various developers that were involved with the numbers of units and neighborhoods. It just so happened that when we were just getting ready to get moving on this, it was the beginning of 2020. <laughs> and something happened around, around that time. What was it? Ah, oh, God, it's all a blur. Oh yeah, a worldwide pandemic that closed everything down. So um, we were, uh, <laughs> we suffered some, a major setback in our planning uh, in our timeline, thanks to COVID. We were also very worried that the conditions caused by COVID shutdowns would make this study, would really kind of corrupt the goal of the study. We intended to look at whether there had been improvement in pest problems, in pest infestations and pest prevention methods and pest um, management practices. But if you haven't been treated, if you haven't been, had the normal kind of pest management program happening in these big buildings, that's gonna mess up your data a little bit. So we are very worried about that. It's already, a situation where this is not really a kind of a classic scientific study, right? There's no control here. We don't have a building that didn't have pest prevention built in um, to compare it with. So this is not, the intention was not to prove pest prevention as an approach, uh, you know, prove how effective it is. Uh, the intention was to see what's out there and to see if there are some correlations between uh, 
some of these pest prevention techniques and pest uh, populations, or maybe between the amount of training or the knowledge of the property managers, um, sanitation of the units, all of this, we wanted to see how those compared. We also just wanted to see what the before and after picture was like, whether things had substantially improved. So one part of the study that we were able to do during COVID shutdowns was property manager interviews. And um, even though there are only nine sites, ultimately, this is much harder than it sounds. The logistics, and Shraddha can attest to that, uh, the logistics around these things uh, were not easy. Uh, we had to do, we, and Annie Wong did a whole bunch of work putting together the materials for these interviews and organizing things. Um, but we, we pulled it off. We had a series of virtual interviews with property managers um, and asked questions like, you know, what do they consider to be the most serious pest problems? Are they trapping or are they monitoring? If so, how? What kind of pesticides are they using? Are they repairing structural deficiencies and so forth? What kind of complaints have they had from residents? Um, and um, we also, so that's one part of the study. Another and probably the biggest part of the study was doing the actual pest inspections, the unit by unit inspections for every apartment, as well as inspections of common areas. So this would be the kitchen or the community room, the refuse areas, things like that. And um, those had to wait till last last summer and fall uh, before things were open enough that we could actually go in but we did it and we had while we were putting that data together we were in communication with the property managers giving them reports like you see here a punch list of things problems that we still found in their in their uh, apartments um what the levels of pests were in different units in particular um they find this helpful. I mean, this it's it, usually with a typical pest management contract, often they do not go through the whole building inspecting every unit. They will go based on complaints or maybe based on a calendar schedule. And so this allowed a snapshot of where, where the problems really were. So we did, as I mentioned, there were nine property manager interviews during lockdown. Uh, ended up with uh, uh, 1,173 units inspected in 42 buildings, nine sites, and then uh, 42 common areas during that period. So here's what we found. And I'm just going to preface this and say, you can imagine this is going to be really sloppy data. This is going to be dirty data. Um, this is dealing with human beings who all have different lifestyles and, and, and different situations, pets or no pets, kids, no kids. Some There are a fair number of disabled and um, senior uh, residents in these buildings, all, a lot of special situations. So the variability is going to be high, and it was high. Um, in addition, like I said, we didn't have a control to compare it with what we could compare things, where, where we can compare things is the differences between, um, between sites mostly. Different sites, different developers did things differently. Some of them did a much better of seal, job of sealing up holes than others or sealing radiators or sealing or dealing with refuse areas and so forth. So what we could do is compare the differences within that group. And that's what we had to work with. Um, so we were kind of I'll step out of the scientist role and just say, I was happy to see <laughs> this result uh, that um, that COVID didn't sort of like wash everything away, that 
despite COVID, the average for the ex average intensity of the cockroach infestations, for example, was significantly lower. These are all statistically significant for what it's worth, all that what I'm showing you here. Um, and so we did ratings of the level of infestation and did an average across all sites uh, before and after, because we had the data from the last time, remember, to compare it with, and we used the same techniques. So cockroaches overall declined. Now, if you look at it, <laughs> if you look at it by site, and we're just using site numbers here, so we don't embarrass people. If you look at it by site, there's quite a bit of variability. So the red bars are the percentage of units, it's a slightly different measure, percentage of units that were infested with cockroaches before the renovation. The blue bar is after the renovation. And, you know, for the most part, there is more decline than increase in cockroaches, but there were four developments where they actually increased before to after. And what's very strange, what I can't understand here is in some ways, the sites that were the worst before are now the best <laughs> and vice versa. Why that is, I don't have an idea. Maybe someone someone in the audience does, but um, this is the way it worked out when you look at it site by site for cockroaches. If you take the same approach to bed bugs and we just put it on the same scale as cockroaches, there are a lot fewer bed bug infestations. Um, and that's a good thing. Bed bugs are super expensive and difficult to, to get rid of. Um, again, there was a, a significant decrease in bed bugs before and after, which is happy news. Not a big surprise. You've done a re renovation. You would hope that things went down, things were cleaner and so forth, even though it was five years ago. If you look at how that breaks down um, by site, every site went down in bed bugs. Uh, the red is before, blue is after, percentage infested. Um, you know, there were up to, one site was up to 25% of all units infested with bed bugs, um, which is a huge problem. <laughs> that is a huge and expensive problem for that site. Um, I think the highest now was about 9%, which is still pretty bad. But um, for some reason, all the units went down on bed bugs, as opposed to cockroaches. Now, when you compare some, compare some of the different things that we measured. So there is a clutter rating. There's actually an accepted system for measuring clutter in units. It's an index. It's based on photos. I, I should have put the slide in here. but Basically, you compare what you're seeing in someone's living room with, with different levels of clutter in this series of photos, and you give it a rating. And nine is the most clutter. Nine is a someone who is a hoarder, essentially. Um, and one is perfectly neat and clean. And um, what we found when you compare that to the cockroach infestations, it's no big surprise, but the more cluttered units tended to have the worst infestations. And this is exactly what we found before in the earlier data. This is a slightly different graph, but it's the same premise. The, the higher clutter rating had the highest percentage infested. So clutter and um, decluttering is a very important um, thing for property managers to take on. And it's a very challenging thing because you have to bring in social services. You have to provide the kind of support that people need some people are not physically able to clean up their units and they need help. So, so not a huge surprise, but clutter is important. Again, sanitation, same deal. Um, the dirtier units on the right had more cockroaches and it's a kind of a consistent trend there um, uh, as you go to higher sanitation rating, which means more, more dirt, uh, you get more, more roaches. Um, now, there was a whole long list of pest prevention uh, tactics that we also monitored as part of this, this study. 
um, and you'll see a list of it in a little bit, but we tried to see if any of those showed a relationship with um, with pest numbers. Um, and a, a few of them stood out and actually had significant relationships. And I just want to point out if there's any scientists in the room, these are correlations. <laughs> this is not causality. There are all sorts of things that could have caused the, the lower pest numbers, for example. But it's really important to see what the relationships are, and that gives us something to work with. You know, it, that's a clue. This might be a factor, right? So even if it's a statistically significant difference, doesn't mean that's what the cause was. So that's that's the the necessary statement in this kind of a study. Um, so radiator pipes, radiator pipes were pretty pretty important, and when you think about it, this makes a lot of sense. Radiator pipes go between units; they're nice, warm, moist places. Um, the the area around the pipe is a perfect runway. Um, uh, Rodents and roaches both love warm. Um, they do better in warm, uh, and moisture is important. So what you see here is the um, the units where the ra that had radiators, had steam radiators that were fully sealed after the renovation, um, did quite a bit better on the rodents than the unsealed ones. And um, that's, you know, that's one you might be able to take to the bank. That's, that's an important, uh, finding, I think. Another one was indoor, indoor refuse areas. Um, you know, there are a lot of ways that you can seal them off, uh, to at least slow down the movement of pests between areas. Um, and, um, uh, in the air, in the ones that were better sealed, uh, there were there were also, on the average, a lower cockroach rating and significant difference between the sealed and unsealed. So radiators, indoor refuse areas, um, those are probably the two biggest ones that stood out in terms of specific tactics that seemed to have an impact. Uh, this is a little hard to look at, but this is kind of a grand summary of <clears throat> how the infestations and clutter and sanitation changed from before the renovation to after the renovation. And I should note that we didn't have a measure for rodents before the renovation, so we can only look at cockroaches and bed bugs. Um, if you see a pink cell, it means that things got worse, basically. Uh, that the percentage of infested um, units with cockroaches or the average rating of infestation went up instead of down. So those are shaded pink. And you can see that um, um, there was, uh, you know, there were there were some sites where it went up, most of them went down. Uh, on bed bugs, they all went down. And clutter and sanitation got worse. And that's pretty easy to imagine in COVID when you have limited access to social services to help with decluttering, when limited access to units for pest management. That was not a surprise. <clears throat> um, and this was another one that um, I think was a useful finding. We took uh, the whole list of pest prevention tactics that were used in these units. And that's other things like sealing on, along electrical conduits, sealing around sinks, um, sealing off pipes, getting rid of harborage, all these sorts of things. We put them all onto one number. We call it an index, pest prevention index. So a higher number means they did a better job in, in building out pests and compared it to the reduction in cockroaches before and after the renovation. And you can see what happened. The, the, um, <clears throat> the uh, units that had the highest level of prevention had the biggest reduction in cockroaches before and after. And it was kind of a steady, steady increase as you go up with that index. 
so that I think that's something you can also take to the bank. Um, uh, that's an important an important finding here. Another way to look at that. I'm sorry, I may be moving too fast <laughs> for you. I don't have the chat available, so someone yell if I'm going too fast. Um, this is another way to look at the same thing. You're fine, Chris. OK. Um, this is looking at the percentage changes in cockroach infestations um, before and after, comparing before with after. And um, so in the pink area, if it was in the pink above zero, it was an increase in cockroaches. If it was in the green, it was a decrease. And if you do a, a, a simple you know, linear regression uh, correlation between these two, uh, there is a significant relationship for what it's worth. This is a this is by site. Um, so this is a little bit different. The one that you just saw was by unit where we did a big average. Um, uh, this is a difference in ratings, average difference in ratings by unit. This is by site where you have site averages of reduction in um, numbers of units infested. But it shows the same thing, better prevention, um, uh, lower cockroach, um, greater reduction in cockroaches. So, um, what I have next here is, this is kind of summarized. So this shows you all the different things that were measured uh, during this study and with the units used. And then uh, an effect. If you see a C, it means it had a significant effect on cockroaches, R, which rodents. A lot of them had, we couldn't discern an effect. Or, or if we did, it wasn't significant. Mostly they were, uh, you know, in the direction we thought they'd be. A lot of them were just big clouds of data points <laughs> that you couldn't really draw any conclusions on. But you can see clutter and sanitation, yes, related to cockroaches. Um, radiator sealing, rodents. Um, sealing around sinks had a, a, a relationship, a weak one, but a relationship with cockroaches. Uh, these other ones uh, didn't show a relationship when you take them individually. But when you take them together, they did. Um, and here, so that was, I'm sorry, there's a few more uh, cracks sealed, voids blocked, baseboard sealed. Um, and then, then the overall index that I mentioned, and we did it by site and by building. You know, we did this calculation by site and by building. And um, uh, when you did it by site, there was a, a correlation with rodents. Um, and cockroaches, and then with by building, it was actually bed bugs and cockroaches for some reason. And uh, here is the, the the data just from common areas. So this is a much smaller group of data. It's 48, I think, points instead of 1,100 points. Um, and we didn't find there wasn't as much. Uh, uh, to see in those points, I mean, there's not as much power to, to see things with so few data points, but we did there find that isolation of indoor refuse seemed to make a difference in cockroach, cockroach populations. So um, conclusions from this study, and we're just uh, wrapping up now, writing the reports, um, putting these materials together so that we can share them more widely. Um, but we did see significant redu reductions in both cockroaches and bed bugs post renovation, despite COVID. Um, a correlation with press prevention index, which is a whole bunch of different tactics and cockroaches. Um, we didn't see it, by the way, with rodents and bed bugs when we looked at the index. And you know, part of that also may relate to the fact that there are a lot fewer units that were infested with rodents and, and uh, bed bugs. Um, we saw the strongest correlations we saw though were with radiator pipes and rodents, indoor refuse areas and cockroaches. Clutter and sanitation, of course, are important to address. And Clutter and sanitation were, as expected, worse 
than before the renovation, probably due to COVID. Although it's it's not easy to, you know, say that's just a, a, a hunch. So that's all I have for you today. I'm happy to um, take questions. It's a great time to talk about this with folks. Um, and I will I will stop sharing now.